Your beatitude, thank you for being here with us. With regard to the current situation in Iraq and Syria, the rise of the Islamic State and its massive violations of human rights, the situation of refugees and internally displaced persons, and as well the response brought by Western governments, what is your impression? Not only impression, but uh, we live uh, a tragic situation. It's kind of a hecatomb for us because I am the patriarch of Syriac Catholics and uh, a large part of our church uh, was living in northern Iraq and uh, particularly in the plain of Nineveh, Syriac Catholics made uh, more than uh, 40 to 45 percent of those Christians have been driven out from uh, their homes, their villages, five weeks ago. After the, uh, uh, what we say, the religious cleansing in Mosul back uh, June 10th. Of course, we are living with our people that tragedy. And I've been uh, four weeks ago visiting with them for six days with the Syria Orthodox Patriarch. I am a Syria Catholic. We did visit most of the uh, centers where they have been uh, uh, allowed to live or to, uh, to stay. It was really a kind of uh, dramatic uh, situation, and especially, especially, we could not answer the question often repeated to us, Patriarch, will you tell us, will you ever return home? That was their question. They lost everything. And they, st they know that uh, this Islamic State uh, uh, mil militias or army still uh, robbing their houses, their, uh, you know, uh, churches, and uh, they are controlling everything and nobody could uh, push them back. And this is the problem for us, how to convince our people to keep hoping that it will be a day they will return home. And for that, they have to stay where they are now, but in very, very uh, rudimentary conditions of living. They don't have where to stay. They can't uh, send their children uh, to schools and how, what to do uh, with uh, many young people staying like that. It will be... Uh, disastrous also for the elderly because uh, they don't have uh, the uh, medical care they need especially the, it was in the in the uh, heat season that means in in august until now it's uh, really uh, hot uh, in, uh, in iraq could uh, be uh, over uh, 110 degrees, uh, and this is very, very uh, bad. Therefore, w for us, if I may say, we Christians in the Middle East, we've been faithful to the Lord. Our ancestors did stay uh, Christians. They didn't uh, betray the Lord, even when they had been persecuted. They didn't seek the daily bread, but before the word of God, as Jesus said, not only of bread man lives, but of every word from the mouth of God. Otherwise, they could have converted, renegade the Lord, and live much better surely than now as a human way. And therefore we feel that as witnesses of the faith, we have been abandoned, betrayed even, by the Western politicians looking just for opportunistic, uh, uh, what we call interest, 
and uh, going to, uh, for instance, a king of the Saudi Arabia, they know very well that that kingdom is the most mo retrograde uh, uh, system of uh, ruling. And what? Because it's so rich, they go and ask, uh, uh, to, you know, uh, what we call uh, it's uh, what we call its uh, pleasure, or they pander to it because they want its money. And therefore, they did betray their values. Last Thursday, we met with President Obama in Washington. I was one of the five patriarchs. We met with him. He came and sat down with us for 35 minutes. We told him, I myself, after uh, other patriarchs, we, uh, not uh, to repeat what they did say, I told him, Mr. President, we come from the Middle East, we speak Arabic, we read Arabic, we understand what is said there, what is written. The fame of the United States is really down in that region. Why? Because the United States doesn't uh, stand for its values, a principle on which it, have, it has been founded. To tell that, look, we live in the 21st century, you got to uh, adapt your system of government for, of the, what we call the civilized world, separating religion and state, and protect and accept others, especially the minorities, they, are, they don't have the means to defend themselves. And he said to me, yes, the United States has always uh, uh, kept the word in defending the rights of those who are whatsoever may vulnerable. I say that, therefore, we say these, they are the facts. Hundreds of thousands of Christians, they have been left like that. Why? Just because they are Christians. They didn't have any means to fight anyone. They didn't want to go in war against anyone. They didn't have any ambition to get to take the government whatsoever. But just because they were Christians, they weren't allowed to leave. Your beatitude, what should be done by the American government or European governments in this case? I call to, uh, the, uh, to the uh, civilized world, I don't know who they are, those uh, civilized countries, to stand uh, uh, up for the principles of ethics and to help those who are mostly uh, needing for, of civil rights according to the, the charter of the uh, universal uh, 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 human rights, that means of 1948. We need that they intervene to liberate those areas being taken with violence by the what you call the Islamic State or the ISIS, ISIS, and to uh, help those driven out to return to their uh, own uh, uh, lands and to live in peace. However, we have, they have to inspire them this kind of confidence and trust because they don't trust anymore. Those who have been driven out five weeks ago, the same thing did happen to them back end of June. And I went just uh, two days uh, after, to tell them, look, we have here the uh, Peshmerga, that means the Kurdish army, they will uh, uh, protect you, uh, go back to your homes and uh, to your villages. And I, uh, two days later, I did celebrate the Mass in the main church of uh, Karakosh, and I was so surprised that the, ch the church was full and uh, they did uh, return. But I can, I can tell you that now, you know, for a while, I did uh, regret what I told them because I could not defend them.